I'd like to do a short video on the installation of the electric fan conversion from Diesel Freaks. I've already got the work done, so I'm just going to talk it through to maybe help somebody who's contemplating doing this and trying to just find out what the best starting point is. Um, the reason for me doing this is I live in Minnesota and I have the all-weather cab with heat and air conditioning, but the heat is inadequate. I had installed the analog gauges. You could see that the temperature moved, now rarely moved off of you know, the bottom of the gauge, which is, I think, like 90 degrees. Anyway, so let's just quickly talk about this. Uh, the work's already done, as I said. So the first thing you have to do is you have to drain a radiator, and there's two ways to do it. There's a pitcock down there, or there's the bottom hose that's got to come off. And the easiest thing to do is take the hose off, put a bucket under there. You're going to lose some antifreeze. I lost about half to three quarters of a gallon. Both hoses come off. The shroud comes off. And you actually take the radiator out. There's four bolts. There's one here down there, same on the other side, you lift the whole thing out. One thing to make note of to caution is these struts here that are in there, you need to take those off to make this job easier, but make sure that you know exactly where this bolt is because this dictates where this is at and this dictates where the, the hood latch is. And I've had to tweak this a couple times since I put it back together because I didn't note, you know, the distance and it pulls it a little bit and it don't take much, all of a sudden you can't get the, Get it open so you uh again hoses come out radiator comes out you actually have to take this uh breather tube off once you get it out and you take on each side there's a cap on the side of the radiator you take that off this fan actually just lays right on top of the radiator and there's just a very maybe a three-eighths of an inch or to a half an inch lip on either side of the radiator and you use self-tapping screws or you use rivets to screw into that or drill into it and rivet it in. I, in, in my case, I use rivets, which seems to work fine. So as you can see, the fan's gone, the shroud's gone. It's a much cleaner, it's much cleaner. So that's the physical side of it. Over here is the electrical. Uh, the kit, install kit, comes with this relay with a number of wires that come out of it, starting with the power. And you're going to get a wiring diagram, but I actually had to call Diesel Freak and kind of talk it through. And I, actually, and I have some background uh, in electronics. This yellow wire is the power wire, which comes back to the battery. In the kit is this fuse, inline fuse, but it's actually a loop of wire and you cut it so you can open it up. You put a spade tip on this end and then you fasten it here in one form or another. I chose to solder and tape it. The control wire back to the fan is a heavy red wire that comes out of this, comes around. Comes, I've got it showing up over here. Here's a wiring harness that clips into the wiring harness down there. And that wiring harness, you know, there's a, there's a tip or a spade or there's a tube, or I don't know what you call this, there's a splice already on this wire, so you strip this one, stick it in, crimp it, and then there's a ground. I'm, I chose to mount this ground right here. The next wire is this orange wire right here that comes out of here. This is the like the switch or the control wire. I chose to put it in here uh, off of Fuse 15, which is the fuel pump fuse, which that makes it, you, you've got switch power then, so that fan won't run unless the switch is on. Some might argue you should be across the battery so that it can cool down when you're done, you know, driving it when you shut off. But this motor is pretty cool. I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. I could change it later on if I think it's going to be. And then the final wire is this gray one here. And if you see, I've got this traversing around and going down to the other side of the block. And what that connects to is the thermal sensor. And you've got two places to put the thermal sensor. One, you could put it right here in the thermostat housing. This is the simplest. But I have this port already occupied with the analog gauges that I put in about a month ago. So that leaves you with the only other option is coming down here. And I'll get a picture of it. Get it. You can see it down there. There's a, there's a plug in there that you have to get out. And it's actually kind of difficult. you got to have, I had a knuckle and some extensions and a three and a half inch ratchet. And I, I had to put my hand down there and hold it while I had somebody up on top twisting it. You know, it just, I was almost ready to take the starter out. I didn't end up having to do that. But anyway, there's two spade tips on that thermal sensor, I guess, for the lack of a better term. The, you put one, you put a spade tip on the gray wire and it, it plugs into one side. It's not polarity sensitive. And then you have to ground that, that with the other side. And, um, and I, I chose to come out 
I've got a little slack in the wire right now because I didn't have a spade tip yet. I just, so I stripped it and put it on here. That's basically the extent of it, you know, without going through the motions, but at least it gives you some idea of what you're in for. You do need some mechanical skills to do this. I will tell you it's worth it though. Um, yesterday morning, it was in the low twenties here. I took this out and drove it around and it was blowing. The heat coming out of it was fantastic. Just sitting here idling, it still doesn't really heat up much, but that's just the nature of this motor. But you start working it and not have, and don't have that, you know, that belt driven fan running and cooling at all times, it heats up nicely. The, the analog gauge is, it's running about 150 degrees is what it says. And that's based on that, you know, being at the bottom of the thermostat. So in my opinion, in this climate where I live in Minnesota, it's well worth the effort.